Hey everybody, welcome back to the Chattery Corner. I am out here in my garden um, planting some Amish paste tomatoes. I also have beefsteak tomatoes, some heirloom tomatoes, some cherry tomatoes, and a whole bunch of hot peppers of all types. Um, hot banana peppers and cabbage and watermelon. I'm planting it all tonight because tomorrow it's going to rain and I really want the roots to get that nice rain. Um, I'll still water them tonight, but then hopefully that rain will encourage them some more growth. Behind me here, I have some sweet peas, corn, and two rows of green beans. So, yeah, I do have a head cold right now. I think it's allergies, um, but we're thriving, we're surviving, and I'm having a lot of fun digging in the dirt, and yeah, I just love gardening. Oliver is out here helping me dig holes. I know my tomatoes look very wilty. They got a little warm today, but yeah, the next few days should be quite nice. Um, but there's the rest of my plants. But I know they're planted kind of close together, but my goal is to put two plants per cage. So like this plant will go up this side of the cage and that plant will go up that side of the cage. So two plants per cage. And I think it'll save me some space and keep it a little bit more organized. And I don't have to spend so much money on cages because they're actually really expensive. So I do have a shovel coming from Walmart in order but for now I'm just using my hands digging down a certain length I can't dig very far because the ground is very very hard it's got clay in it so I just dig it that much and then I just build dirt over it let me show you so what I do is I split the roots a bit I don't know if that's a good or bad thing but I think I remember my dad doing that and I just cover it with dirt and then I make sure to mound it a good two inches up from where the stem started just to keep it secure for now so there's a mound around there that much because I can't dig as deep all right you guys it's dark now I planted the jalapenos this way and my tomato rows are going to be this way And then that's the last of my hot peppers. So now behind that will be some watermelon viney plants or cabbage. And then I'll make another row of tomatoes. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you my husband and his friend Sam who went fishing this evening. Sam got himself this Asian carp and my husband got a blue catfish. For some reason he could not keep a hold of that carp and it was just making us crack up. We went dumpster diving tonight. We got one, two, three, four, five, six boxes of fried chicken. We got a whole box of a whole case of spicy chicken sandwiches. A whole unopened case of Drummond, <laughs> Drummond, wow, drumsticks and twisted pops, which, what is that? Let's look. I think it's ice cream as well. And everything frozen but cold oh it is frozen look at that wow i shouldn't even have bought popsicles from walmart look at that look at that frozen and then we got a couple cans of biscuits i always find biscuits in the dumpster don't know why got a couple of these which are in this no this bag right here got a bag of chicken nuggets this margarine and then we got crispy tater tots a whole case of that and that was all all right before i continue my gardening video here's an update on my raised flower bed garden bed i guess i've got radishes mustard seed and two types of lettuce coming up and i'm so excited to start harvesting hopefully within the next month All right, you guys, I was trying to plant in my garden, but it is so muddy. I'm still trying to get used to this Kentucky dirt that's down here. 
it's very clay like it has clay in it and when it gets wet you sink down and like if the mud just sorry car went through i had to cut the clip so yeah the mud just cakes onto you and it'll stick to the bottom of your shoes you can't walk anymore it's oh i hate it anyway i didn't know that i went out to my garden i step in and my foot like sinks like this much so i'm like yeah i can't do this but i did plant my watermelon and my cucumbers which was along the back end of my garden so i was able to be in the grass a little bit anyway so i got that planted i'll have to finish the rest next week i'm sorry about that but you'll see it in my clip for next week then um but as a random side note, I did my my monthly cast iron cleaning. I use cast iron skillets for pretty much everything, so I don't clean them the whole way um, until the end of the month after a while of using it for a while. I scrape it, I clean everything, so I thought I would show you my tips and tricks for that. Um, if you're not interested in that part of the video, then feel free to sign off. And I will see you next week for next week's video. Thank you so much for being here. Please consider subscribing and joining the Chattery Corner community. Once again, I appreciate that you're here. I hope you have a good day. I'm going to show you how I clean my cast iron skillets. I got both of these from the Walmart camping section. This larger pan, and I don't remember what the size of this one is, maybe 15 inches. And then this one is 10 inches, I believe. Um, yeah, they're both seasoned. I had this larger one for three years and the smaller one for four years. Both beautiful. They have a little bit of rust because I had them soaking and didn't wash them right away because I wanted to make this video. Contrary to belief, you can use soap on your pans. I believe back in the day they didn't want you to because soap had lye in it. Um, but modern soaps are fine to use. I will either use this metal scrubby, this bamboo scrubber, or just a cheap scrubber that I got out of the dollar section at Dollar General. They all work really great depending on how much is sticking to the pan and if you've pre-soaked or not. So I'm going to add a splash of hot water to the pan and I use various friendly oils to cook and butter so it keeps my pan seasoned and greased till they're cleaned. So I've decided to use the bamboo scrubber. I got this at Hobby Lobby a couple years ago and I'm still using it to this day. I like to clean in circular motions. Um, I don't know if there's any technique behind that, but that's just how I do it. So let me reorganize the way I'm doing this. Actually, I'm gonna dump out the water and set the camera up differently. All right, so I'm gonna start scrubbing. You can see the rest on the pan. This one actually wasn't that dirty. I had just cooked some rice in there. Um, so, oh, look at that dirty water. I always think it's so satisfying. And you can see how seasoned it is because the water beads up and it could also be the grease on it. I am doing two types of cleaning here. This pan I am doing without soap and the next pan I'll do with soap and show you the difference. So yeah, I just finished it off with the wire scrubby, make sure everything comes off. That's one really nice thing about cast iron skillets is you can use sharp utensils on it and it won't damage cast iron all right so I saw a youtuber on Facebook I don't remember his name he's from northern Michigan and I was watching how he cleans his cast iron skillets and he does like a whole process where he cooks it and stuff to season it and or like bakes it and I just don't understand that if you want to heat it up do it on the stovetop it's just as easy and I don't know not as time consuming um, but I'm just gonna dry it off with a paper towel here and then add my favorite oil to it um, that I'll show you in a minute. I'm just showing you the seasoning there How seasoned my pan is so I use this oil. It's an extra virgin olive oil um, <laughs> You can scan this barcode and track this bottle how it's made the field to the bottle um, I didn't put enough oil in which I'll add some more in a minute, but then I get a paper towel and I just smear the oil all over the place and you can let it on the heat and let the oil soak in or my pan is hot already from the hot water and it just kind of takes care of itself but you can see when i remove the paper towel that there's still um a little bit of darkened grease i think from the pan i believe that's what it is is grease because the pan is no longer dirty um so yeah that's just what it is <laughs> All right, so here's the 10 inch pan, definitely dirtier than the other one. And this one we're gonna use soap. 
Um, it honestly doesn't make that much of a difference in the end when I'm cleaning it. There's still dirt that comes up or like, I don't know if it's old grease or what it is, but yeah, it still shows up, but hey, my food tastes the same either way. So, <laughs> um, anyway, I'm going to use the metal scrubby for this one and it's so satisfying seeing all that dirt come off. I shouldn't call it dirt. It's just food, but yeah, you know what I mean? After I rinse it, I'm going to scrub it one more time just to make sure everything is off. Rinse it, and then you can see here again the beading and the seasoning that's on the pan. Beautiful. I do not have to bake it to make it be seasoned. I'm not sure where that started. Um, so yeah, over the four years, you know, I have used it to cook in the oven, like cornbread and biscuits and stuff. And so it just kind of seasons itself over the years. You don't have to bake it to season it. I will repeat that over and over. Again, I'm adding my oil. Once again, the pan is already hot because of the hot water that I used. Um, this is just my fast way of doing it. I don't understand the whole four hour, five hour process <laughs> if it takes that long the other way. Um, I just do it this way and it's been working for me and my pans remain seasoned. So yeah, here they are, all done, all clean, and ready for use. So yeah, hopefully this helps you in your cast iron journey and you don't get too stressed out when using it. Honestly, I've been doing this for four years and it's worked for me. Um, I'm sure everybody has their own techniques, but this is how I do it.